Hey everybody, I'm Rosemary and welcome to my channel. It's been a minute, so for those of you who have already been following me, thank you so much for sticking around. Life has been pretty crazy to say the least, just dealing with a lot of work, anxiety, and overall pandemic stress. So I'm really, really happy to finally have the chance to sit down and do another video for you all. This video is part of my audio assist series where I've been sharing some of my audio and music production tips as well as some of my music business tips releasing music as an independent artist. I've got my notebook here so you know we're gonna get into some sh**. This video has honestly been a couple of years in the making. Back in 2019, I wrote a couple of songs in my bedroom in Brooklyn, and I'm so excited to say that these songs are finally out as part of my EP called Part of Me. And I released this EP back in June. I released this music without a record label, without a PR firm, solely just on my own, so I really wanted to share the entire process with you all from beginning to end. So like I said before, I wrote these songs in 2019 in Brooklyn, and it was one of those rare occasions where these songs just kind of poured out of me. So I made these little demos, working on my production chops in Ableton, and I'm honestly still really proud of how they came out. But I knew I wanted someone to help me flesh out the songs a little bit more and just make them sound overall a little bit more polished. So I sent the songs to my friend Ben Carr, who's an amazing producer and bassist. He goes by the name of Cartoon, so you should definitely check him out. And luckily he agreed to help me finish producing these songs and we got to work. We had a handful of sessions at his place working on the songs, again, fleshing them out a little bit more. I think we even started to record some of the vocals, but then COVID happened, of course. We managed to have a couple of Zoom sessions and I even went to his place and we were masked up and all of that. Just, you know, having some pandemic sessions was interesting. But actually a majority of the vocals on the EP were actually recorded in the closet of my childhood bedroom. So I had fun sort of working this out and making it all happen despite the pandemic. Once we had the tracks finalized, cartoons got to mixing, we had a couple of revisions just to make sure that the songs were sounding how we wanted them. It was really a, a nice team effort and it's such a pleasure working with cartoons. Once we had the mixes finalized, I sent the songs over to another good friend, Joshua Pleader, who is an amazing audio engineer, and he mastered the songs for us. Now the mastering process was a little bit quicker. Uh, I think there's only one song that I had him do a revision for but you know it, it was a really easy process to to get the masters done and just for a little reference on the timeline of all of this I told you I wrote the songs in 2019 probably somewhere in the summer and fall and then I finally got the master recordings the final master recordings in January of 2021 so about a year and a half maybe even two years uh, of a process and it did take a little bit longer than I was hoping for but I really wanted to make sure I was super happy with how the songs sounded and the quality of the recordings and I think the songs really speak for themselves. So at this point I had the final master recordings on my computer and I reached out to another friend, you'll notice a pattern here, another good friend named Molly Richardson who is an awesome graphic designer and photographer based in Rochester, New York. We had a couple of Zoom calls to brainstorm album artwork ideas, and I knew that I wanted to release one song as a single and then the EP as a whole. So we sort of focused on the single first, and she had posted a really beautiful photo on her Instagram a little while back, and it always stuck with me, and we ended up using that as the album artwork for the single, How Will I Know. She also had a really, really nice time lapse that I thought would be a really great Spotify canvas, and we'll talk about the Spotify canvas in just a little bit. So I was lucky enough for her to let me use the artwork as well as the time lapse for the single. And then we had a little bit more of a brainstorming session for the EP artwork because I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted. I knew that I wanted my face to be on the album artwork since some of my previous album artwork was more graphic design, but since this project is so special to me and so close to my heart, I wanted people to see my face listening to the music and sort of see the artist behind the music. 
So I had a little photo shoot with my boyfriend and I have a really nice little Polaroid camera. So we took a couple of Polaroids and some of them came out really good. So I sent the Polaroids to Molly and she did a really cool thing where she used a little bit of graphic design work to sort of manipulate the photo and create a couple of different layers. So she found some flowers in her neighborhood. She scanned the flowers and sort of added the flowers to the Polaroid, creating this really cool sort of 3D effect. And I think the artwork came out perfect. The artwork is really sweet, it's really soft, and I think it is a really good representation of the EP itself. So I had the master recordings and the album artwork ready and I just took a little time to sort of brainstorm when I wanted to release the single How Will I Know and when I wanted to release the entire EP. So I figured and I planned that I would release the single in sort of early May and then a couple weeks later I would release the entire EP in early June. At this point, I started to upload the songs and the album artwork to DistroKid, and DistroKid is my distribution service. I have an entire video on how to distribute your music, but I've loved working with DistroKid. They make it so easy to upload your music and get it out into the world, and I would highly recommend using DistroKid. Now, once I had everything uploaded to DistroKid, I actually used the Teams feature in DistroKid to add cartoons to my release so that we could both get the royalties that we agreed upon. I have a whole nother video on how the DistroKid Teams feature works, so feel free to go watch that if you're more interested. But basically, it allows you to add the other collaborators on your music release so that they each get the split that you've agreed upon. So Cartoons and I agreed on a percentage beforehand, and I invited him onto the team for the release, and it was easy as that. There's a couple of new marketing tools that DistroKid has to offer that I actually used for this specific release, so I want to share them with you all because I think they're super, super useful. The first marketing tool that I used is the Spotify Canvas tool, and I mentioned this before, but I think this tool is a really great way for your music to sort of stand out and give your audience a little bit more of an idea of your intentions behind each song and sort of give them an idea into more of who you are as an artist. So these videos are only about eight seconds, no more than eight seconds, and they kind of show up behind the artwork in your Spotify web player or on your phone. And I sort of made these videos on my own just by using my phone, and I thought it was a great way to sort of bring out the meaning of each song. So You've Been Gone, which is a song off of my EP, is a song that I wrote about the sun, so I decided to get a little video of the sun one day when it was a super clear sky, and I think it added a little bit to the song when you listen to it. Now, in order to add our Spotify canvas to our music release, we actually have to go to our Spotify for Artists account, which we can easily get to through DistroKid by going to this little goodies tab and going to the special access tab. And this will allow us to go directly to our Spotify for Artists page and claim it for ourselves if we haven't already done so. Once I'm on my Spotify for Artists homepage, I can go to the music tab and select any of my music releases. And I can easily add the canvas just by hitting this little add canvas button on the top right corner. You'll notice there's a couple of different file requirements and this can get a little tricky so just make sure that you export your video at the right ratio and as the right file extension. And again, our video for the Spotify canvas is only three to eight seconds long, so pretty short. The next marketing tool that I wanna to talk to you about is the synced lyrics tool. And this basically allows you to sync the lyrics to any given moment of the song. And this is really useful for if you're using your song in Instagram stories, people can see the lyrics as they happen in the song. And I think this again adds a little bit more meaning, a little bit more of a connection to the audience and allows them to really understand the meaning behind your song. We can find our lyrics tools in the same goodies tab that we found our Spotify for Artists page. And this time we can go to enhance your music to go check out our lyrics. So you'll notice that for each song that has vocals, there's both the plain lyrics and the synced lyrics. So the plain lyrics will be sent to music stores, whereas the synced lyrics are what we're talking about where the lyrics will show up at any given point of the song and they will be synced up to the vocals. So if we go into our synced lyrics for How Will I Know, one of the songs off of the EP, 
there's a, a little bit of directions up top so basically we can listen to the song and hold the space bar down when we hear the beginning of any line of the lyrics and release the space bar when the lyric is finished and it's kind of like we're almost performing the song over again while listening to it and it's a little bit tricky a little bit uh, of a learning curve to get used to but it's so worth it to get these synced lyrics so that we can use them in instagram stories and on facebook Now, I didn't use this specific marketing tool, but I'm going to use it right now because I think it's so awesome. And this is called the Spotlight Tool. And this allows you to choose one of your songs to potentially get featured on one of DistroKid's many Spotify playlists. And we all know that getting on a Spotify playlist could be useful for gaining new audience members and for upping those stream numbers. So you can select one of your songs that you want to be featured and people get to vote via a shareable link. So this is a great way for people who might not have heard your music before to finally hear it. And also you never know if you're gonna get in one of those Spotify playlists. So it's a free feature I think is totally awesome. Not to mention all the other ones that I've mentioned before are also free, the Spotify Canvas tool as well as the Synced Lyrics tool. Once again, we're gonna go back to the goodies tab. All of our marketing and promo materials can be found within this goodies tab. So really easy to get to. Uh, and now in order to get to the spotlight page, we're gonna go to this first tab, get heard now. And as you can see, there's a couple of other really cool features that we can maybe try out. But let's go to the playlist spotlight and see if we can upload one of my tracks for potentially getting on one of the DistroKid playlists. So first off the bat, I see that I can actually vote for uh, one of these tracks to potentially get on the playlist. But what I wanna do is add my own track. And it looks like I need to make a DistroKid username. So let's just do Rosemary music and I want to do one of the songs that was off of the latest EP so let's do part of me I think that's a strong strong song so now I can select my preview clip start time it's only 29 seconds so I want to make sure I get at least a part where I'm singing so I guess I'll start with the first verse which happens I think around 20 seconds in and let's hit connect with Spotify and this will link to my Spotify for artists page and easy as that. Now I can share this link and make sure people can vote for my song to be added to one of these playlists. The last new marketing tool on DistroKid that I wanna talk about is something called promo cards. And this is a great way to have easy content to share for people to find your music more easily. So there's a bunch of different options. Some of them are really, really cool. And you can see that there's a lot of ways for you to customize the promo card and make it more fitting to whatever sort of project you're releasing at the time. Another feature of DistroKid that I used is something called Hyperfollow, which I've talked about before. And this is a really great way for people to pre-save your music or more easily find your music and where they can listen to it. So I actually did a pre-save sticker giveaway for my single How Will I Know and I basically encouraged people to go pre-save my song via the hyperfollow link and once they pre-saved the song I asked for their address so I could send them some stickers that my friend Sydney made. These are awesome customized stickers for me and for my personal brand. So it was a really great way to sort of get to know my audience a little bit better and make them feel like they've been rewarded for pre-saving my music. I've never done a pre-save sticker giveaway before or sort of any pre-save campaign, but I think it really did help sort of gain some traction for the single that I released. It got a lot of plays on the first day, which I think always helps when you're releasing music. And another really great feature about the hyperfollow link 
is that on release day, it switches from a pre-save sort of page to where people can actually listen and find your music. So there's no need to sort of re-upload the link once your music is released, it automatically switches over. Now, in terms of social media marketing, I made a bunch of little promo videos that I could post on Facebook, as well as Instagram Reels, and I think these really helped sort of gain some traction to the songs that I was releasing. I tried to make videos that featured me, not just the artwork, because I feel like videos with actual humans in them tend to do a little bit better than just, you know, static artwork. So I made sure to have a couple of videos where I was, you know, doing something at the piano maybe, or sort of just out exploring uh, in nature. And I think this helped sort of add more, more depth to the promotional videos, not just, you know, a simple little piece of artwork with the song. I also made videos for YouTube featuring the artwork and the song. I already have a, a good number of followers here on YouTube, so I wanted to make sure that they could easily access my new music. And in the description of the YouTube videos, I put links to Spotify and all the different streaming services so my YouTube followers can also go follow me on those streaming services. I uploaded my music to Bandcamp and did a little pre-order campaign there. So if people decided to pre-order my EP on Bandcamp, they would get a free automatic download of one of the songs ahead of time so it's a nice little incentive for people to pre-order the music. It also sounds a little bit old school but I do have an email list of some of my you know more intentionalized followers and fans so I made sure to send out an email to my email list when the single dropped and of course when the EP dropped and this is a nice way to sort of make these specific followers and fans feel a little bit more in the loop. As you can see, a lot of work went into this music release, but I wanted to make sure that the music release was intentional, and I really took the time to sort of plan it out and figure out a good marketing strategy all on my own. DistroKid makes it so easy to distribute your music, and if you're interested in using them, I do have a VIP code, which I'll link down below, and you can use it to save 7% on your first year's membership. Feel free to leave a comment down below as well if you have any questions or any comments about what it's like releasing music in 2021 as an independent artist. And I hope that this video was somewhat helpful. So until next time, see you then.